For those of you who don't know me, there's a lot of good friends here in this group. Uh, some of whom I was in leadership classes with and, and other endeavors throughout the community. And I uh, see Barbara Sexton Smith in the front row. This is your first day of retirement? And she's here? <laughs> <laughs> of the arts actually this is a very comfortable building for me to be in you know when you're out with those things and people say tell the one thing nobody knows about you I guess everybody's gonna know this pretty soon but uh, I, my undergraduate degree is actually in music and uh, I grew up in this building and I actually remember when this building was a hole in the ground as many of us do who've grown up here in, in this city and what a wonderful asset it is for the community and I've rehearsed in this uh, room, I've performed in this room, and I'm seeing the stickers on the floor, and I kind of just want to go stand on one and have it <laughs> you know, ready to go. It's a very, very comfortable place to be. Uh, but I, for those of you who don't know me, let me tell you just a little bit about myself real quickly. I am from this area. I grew up actually in Meade County, uh, so I have lived regionalism my entire life. And then I went to the University of Louisville, and I have lived here uh, in the city full-time for, for 20 years now. Um, and it's a wonderful place. I, I love Louisville, and I love the fact that people use the L word when they talk about Louisville. And you know when you travel to other places or you visit family from other places, you don't hear that the way you hear about it here. We have a wonderful quality of life, uh, sense of place and authenticity, and uh, I love being a part of that, and I know, I know you do too. And that's why you're here, and that's why you're a part of the Leadership Louisville Center and a part of our community. Um, just like our great citizen soldier, uh, Lewis here, sets a great example for us, his leadership of LDMD, all those wonderful flower pots you see throughout our downtown. That started by Lewis. He's leading uh, Brightside into its uh, next iteration. Uh, it's our clean and green entity, but it's also soon to be our force behind our trees and everything we're doing with that and a new cleanliness program that's been announced. Hope you're a part of that. Uh, so he's setting a wonderful example for all of us to lead. As everybody in this room is, and everything that we do, um, we are leading by example. That's the most important thing we can do. But today, uh, in, instead of doing, we'll do a little talking. So I want everyone here to get a base understanding of the changes that we've had and what Louisville Forward is. And I'll start by recognizing my friend Kent Euler in the back. And Kent's, of course, the new CEO of, of GLI. And um, he officially started June 1, I officially started July 1. He's got 30 days on me. <laughs> We've been spending a lot of time together. And uh, GLI and Louisville Forward are related. We do have an official relationship together. We're doing a lot together. And uh, there's not a day that hasn't gone by in this uh, recent time frame that we haven't been working together on something. But the nature of the relationship has changed a little bit. And so when we formed Louisville Forward, Really, two major things have, have changed in how we do and structure economic development. And the first that everybody's familiar with is we changed the nature of our, our, contract, our contractual relationship with GLI. And um, the staff that, that had been there and the function that had been there has now come into city government. And so the business attraction retention expansion function that had been a part of that contract is now inside the Department of Economic Development within Global Forward. And we actually did hire a couple of staff people who worked at GLI, and we're going to be hiring some additional staff and a new director. So over the next few months, we will continue to staff up uh, that particular function and uh, turn it into a high-performing machine to attract new business to Louisville, help businesses here expand, and to retain the companies that we do have here and help make them successful. And we will organize that work around our clusters. I think most everybody here is pretty familiar with the cluster strategy. And it dates back uh, many years uh, to where we had started with three, and then we had four. And now, thanks to the Advantage Louisville process that was led by GLI, we're up to five clusters. So I think everybody's familiar with uh, our kind of our core work that we've done around logistics and distribution. Obviously, having UPS here gives us a tremendous advantage. Our geographic location being within a day's drive of over two-thirds of the country's population. And I, I always like to think about it in terms of our history. Uh, the fact that we're even here as a city because of the falls out there and our beginnings as a river port all the way to today's life as a world port. But what is the future of logistics and distribution? It, it's changing. It, it is, as I've said, the bluebird that flies in the window every couple weeks here. We have a, a company that locates in Louisville because they need to be near UPS and the uh, next day air capacity to the entire world. 
But that business is changing. And when it, you know, the last 10 years or 15 years, it's been more about boxes and moving around merchandise. Um, and these jobs are generally not well paying. They're often seasonal, often don't come with benefits. So those types of jobs are not a path to prosperity for us as a region. But those jobs are changing, and that industry is automating more, so we need to be prepared for that. And we also need to look at ways that we turn that logistics sector into our advantage. So the bluebird flies in, and we say, okay, what can we do else? What else can you do here? Can you bring your marketing team here? Can you bring your back office function here? What about your software developers? And so we can have additional types of jobs here in that sector. Another sector that we all know very well in Louisville is advanced manufacturing. And that started out as manufacturing, it's now grown into man advanced manufacturing uh, with the changes in that industry as well. And it's another place where we had a lot of you know, historically manual labor. Uh, they were good wages. They were family supporting wages. They still are, but not the same as they used to be. And there are fewer of them because of continued automation. And we need to continue to train a workforce that can help support that automation. The manufacturing will continue to be a very strong base for us as a region, and that's a focus, as you know, of the Bluegrass Economic Advancement Movement, being that you've heard about. That's the partnership uh, between Louisville and Lexington and the 22 counties. Uh, and that's an area where we have a lot of growth potential. So um, my favorite sector, you know, you're supposed, not supposed to have favorites, but who can not love the food and beverage sector? <laughs> it's just fun. Uh, and that's come to mean different things for us, too. So we have a wonderful um, business sector here around that with Yum, the world's biggest restaurant company, having their headquarters here. Uh, Papa John's, Homegrown, it's here. Texas Roadhouse, uh, a lot of great brands that have significant operations here. And, of course, our distilling industry. Amazing uh, collection of companies there, Brown Foreman being the largest. Um, but, you know, that's a, had a lot of change in that industry. Uh, which is very exciting with what's going on in the smaller side of that, the craft area of distilling. And we're going to have an amazing renaissance here, uh, Main Street stretching all the way from I-65 down to 10th Street, where very soon we're going to have multiple uh, craft distilleries with tourism operations that you can go visit and be a wonderful magnet for tourism. In addition to the Kentucky Bourbon Trail, uh, once you get out into the countryside and get to go see those facilities. And of course, local food. Local food, uh, that is one of our calling cards around the world, an amazing thing uh, that contributes to our authenticity, but it is also about economics. We have a lot of additional demand. We actually participated in a demand study, and there are, are still hundreds of millions of dollars of, of unrealized potential there in the 100-mile uh, radius around us where uh, our farmers can grow for us, and we can eat here in Louisville and eat well. Lifelong wellness and aging care, we're still the capital of the universe for that. We have more of those companies headquartered here than anywhere else. And uh, there's a lot of innovation going on in that area. And with the silver tsunami upon us, with the aging uh, generations, uh, that will be an area where we have an opportunity to continue to grow as well. Uh, and into other areas of health innovation with the collection of healthcare companies we have here. So the fifth and, and new sector is something called business services, which sounds very vague, and well, it can cover quite a bit. But it was identified in Advantage Global as an area where we can compete. And that stretches all the way from sort of basic back office work all the way to high-end HR consulting. And it's the kind of work that can be done from anywhere, thanks to technology and the increasingly mobile and connected world that we live in. And so because we have a relatively uh, low cost of doing business uh, and we have a really high quality of life, this is a place where folks are looking to either move those operations or consolidate them. We have several uh, prospects in the pipeline that fit into that description. So that's the cluster strategy. We'll be spending a, a lot of our efforts and we'll be working with GLI in a, in a targeted way uh, to do maybe, maybe some micro-targeting around specific companies, specific sections of some of those clusters where we can go forward uh, and, and maybe attract some new business to Louisville. It's a pretty exciting time for that. So the other thing I want to talk about um, in terms of what we've done, we've done with the reorganization into Global Forward is the other half of the house, if you will, that we call Develop Global. And that is where we have brought together all of the city's real estate, land use, planning, and design functions. 
And before this, um, they'd kind of been housed in four different pieces of metro government. And I want to recognize Bill Schreck, the other the ultimate public servant, who is our interim director of Develop Louisville. Many of you have worked with him over the years. And uh, Gretchen Milliken is here, who is our director of advanced planning from that area. Also from Metro, I know Teresa Reno Weber is somewhere, our Office of Performance Improvement and several of her team members. And we're um, all working together to, to meld this together. So this is a little bit more reorganization challenge. So I'll talk to you about you know, what we're doing in terms of building the team in economic development, continuing the, the focuses that we've had and expanding them. This is a, a really neat opportunity on the developed global side to streamline process for folks who need to go through it. Um, if anybody, has anybody been to the 444 building where we're all housed across from the cathedral? So, you know, ironically the way the building is set up, the economic development team, the advanced planning team is on the sixth floor and the permitting people on the first floor. And so literally you can go from the sixth floor with a concept about what you want to do with a business, get a loan, get started, get a business plan, and work your way all the way down through planning and zoning and the other opportunities on floors two through five to the first floor, get a permit, and be on your way to doing business. Uh, it's, a, it's not all going to happen one day, but the idea is that we can accelerate your idea as a business person all the way to the moment that you start construction on your new building or your expansion. And the entitlement proceedings and the permitting proceedings that uh, you have to go to, even, go through, even on a, on a small project sometimes can be really harrowing and really uh, challenging. So our concept with Develop Louisville is to make that simpler for you. But it is also to continue to focus on our quality of place. And quality of place is a, a huge calling card for us. Um, we know it because we live here. We love it. It's a neat place. Um, we have a lot of that authenticity I've been talking about. And that's largely because we've preserved it. I believe we're still fourth on the list of cities with the most sites on the National Register of Historic Places. We've got these wonderful, great bones around here. Um, how many of you were on the, the glide trip to Charlotte? So, so there were a couple of quotes that stuck with me, and one of them was on the last day there, and we heard from their um, opinion page editor at the newspaper, who said Charlotte's idea of uh, historic preservation was to tear down a historic building and put up a historic marker. <laughs> and I do get that feeling when you roam around Charlotte that it's all new. You know, somebody said, wow, it's so clean, it's awesome. And my friend Rebecca Matheny looked at him and said, it's all new. <laughs> um, it, it, it's different here and you know there are challenges to preservation there are challenges and there's a natural tension there sometimes between development and preservation but I'm awfully glad we've kept a lot of our old stuff preserved it and found a way to make it work and, and we'll continue to do that and incentivize that because it's part of who we are we also have great parks um, great arts we're one of only a dozen cities that have all five major performing arts groups we kind of take that for granted that we have a ballet an orchestra an opera children's theater and a full theater, and the Broadway series in addition to that. We're a little spoiled, and we should never never let that uh, become complacent to us. Uh, amazing things with the loop going on, the development of Parklands. If you haven't been out there yet, go spend some time. I haven't spent enough time there. I'm excited to do more of that this summer. But those are the types of things that make it great to live in Louisville, and that is a huge component of economic development. I think you've heard us talk um, for the last year or so about the changing paradigm of economic development that people used to move to where the jobs were and now the jobs move to where the people are and more specifically where the talented people are so if we can be very deliberate about talent attraction and the culture here and that's a culture of, of who we are the fabric of who we are but also a culture of doing business like you talked about Lewis then we will have the folks here that will then drive the business here and so the, the last thing I want to talk about before opening up for questions is around workforce. And workforce being one of our biggest challenges. But we're not special in that regard. Every city is dealing with this. And every city has a date with destiny on workforce. And so can we get ahead of that curve? Can we be different? And this is where a partnership with the business community and GLI and our other partners, I see Wendy Dan Chester here from One Southern Indiana, uh, all of us are going to have to row together on this and pull heavily. Uh, we're, we're behind as a country. And if you were at the Global Cities meeting uh, with Brookings a couple weeks ago, Chase was a sponsor of that as well, it, then you heard some of that discussion. And employers need to lead. Um, government won't solve this problem. You know, it was a great joke. Hey, I'm 
here with the government, I'm here to help. Um, sometimes it's our job to help, sometimes it's our job to get out of the way, and a lot of time it's our job to catalyze and to convene, and that's a lot of what we're doing around this area. If you listen to employers talk about workforce, uh, some of them will say very bluntly, you know, I just kind of sat around and expected the school system and the universities to deliver me my next employees, and I just picked for them. And employers now are coming to realize that the system isn't doing that for them. The system hasn't caught up. So we have a whole dialogue we need to have um, and, and continue to accelerate around what the school districts are producing and then what the university system is producing. And part of that's a Frankfurt discussion in terms of how universities are incentivized and how universities are funded. And then part of that's a local discussion as it relates to the flexibility that the school district and JCTC and other providers can, can offer. Um, but it's about connecting that demand from the employers to the supply channel. And the supply channel might be coming from different sources than just higher ed anymore. Uh, and that's, that's a really exciting thing for us to be working on together. Uh, James Reddish from GLI is here. That's part of his job. Um, it's part of Ted Smith's job now in uh, local metro government. A lot of people ask me, so if you're doing this, what's Ted doing? Well, I, I refer to Ted as my um, co-conspirator. Uh, he is a great colleague and a, an incredibly creative, innovative mind. And Ted is uh, our chief of civic innovation, still very much involved in our daily work around entrepreneurship, innovation, which he'll tell you can mean a lot of different things in any given day, and workforce. And one of the specific tasks around workforce for us is taking Kentucky and Works to the next level of being that workforce intermediary. Um, and it's a great organization, but Kentucky and Works is based on the Workforce Investment Act. They are a workforce investment board. They are a federally created and uh, chartered entity. Uh, so what that means is they're actually working under a law that was built in another era. So there is a disconnect between who they are, what they're funded to do, and what we need in the community. Now there are great examples of WIBs, Workforce Investment Boards, around the country <coughs> overcoming that and surpassing that. And that's what we're doing right now with Work Kentucky and Works, their leadership and their board, is um, really being able to turn that organization into something that's going to uh, be able to more nimbly address the needs of employers. Thank you, Mary Ellen. Well, thank, thank you. you.